first of all, Sophie, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm not the only one who came in from outside of Singapore. You came in from Korea. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. A little bit of a shorter plane flight, but still. <laughs> Had to go through the same gauntlet at the airport, but it worked because we're here. Yeah. Which is great. great. So yeah, let's great start off with, so what is Adriel? Tell me about Adriel. So Adriel provides a marketing data dashboard for advertisers, creators, and agencies for them to better understand where their marketing dollars are going, um, what's the result from those marketing investments. And just to give you an example, uh, we once worked with a creator, a YouTube influencer, uh, to promote our brand in North America. So we were the brand, and we used our own marketing dashboard uh, to track the performance, uh, the, all the results, and we invited that creator to talk about the data, uh, about our performance, and then, guess what? That creator became a client, and he's now using the dashboard uh, to work with other brands. So who's the creator? Can uh, you tell me? Jamie, Jamie Turner, do you know him? Who is it? He's, 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 he's in B2B SaaS uh, platform, so... Cool. Yeah. Nice. All right, so yeah, you work with a lot of big brands, but now talk more about working with creators and how you're building up the creator side of the business. So as, as a brand, we work uh, with some creators and we also see a lot of brands because a lot of brands are our, our clients and we see a lot of brands are working with creators and for them, um, it's no longer just an option. I think it's a must mm -hmm. because you know, brands, they used to uh, work with creators in this way. So they used to um, just manufacture the product and then create a message around the product, and they would push that message to the audience. Um, and it was mostly done by an established traditional media industry, but now that power structure is shifting, and now each and every individual creator, they create um, their own story, and they talk about the brand, and what they talk about the brand eventually becomes a brand. So right. perception becomes reality. So now, brands, they even rely on what creators and indi individual creators are talking about, even from the point where they design and manufacture the products. It's, it's, a, it's a great uh, shift, I think. Yeah, I mean, brands have to let their brand message go because the creators are the ones going to shape it anyway. Yeah. Or, as we're finding, and we've been talking about this all day, creators are becoming direct consumer brands themselves. Exactly. So are you working with creators and starting to see them as they start to create their own products? helping them produce that, and how's that, how's that working yeah, out? Yeah, great question. So creators, uh, they're often not professional marketers. Right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, our dashboard is really easy uh, to use. It's like no code, plug and play. Um, they use our dashboard to basically have like one clear visibility of their marketing uh, performance across different channels, and they often own multiple brands. And when you have multiple brands and multiple campaigns or multiple channel, uh, it's hard to understand very well where your marketing dollars are going, whether they make sense, and it's hard to have good insights for your next marketing strategy. So that's how Adriel uh, comes into the picture. Yeah, well, look, let's talk about brands for a minute. So I'm a marketer, I'm a bunch of brands, you know, maybe I'm Unilever or somebody else, and uh, I'm really leaning into creators and influencers. What kind of data do I need to? keep an eye on because it's very different when you're working with creators than if you're, say, putting it out on a billboard or sticking it on a TV network. T talk about the data there that they, what, what's important to that creator or yeah. to that brand when great, they're working with great, creators? Yeah, again, great question. So um, back to uh, my statement about this democratization of content. So as there are more and more stakeholders being involved in this, you know, marketing of brands, trust becomes super important. Trust and transparency and therefore data. So data is super, super important. Mm -hmm. No one will de deny that. And um, what kind of data is important? Uh, there, there are a lot of questions around that. But what, I would say what's really important is to clearly define the goal of each campaign first. Because depending on the goal of your campaign, you need to track different metrics. For example, if your goal of campaign is brand awareness, obviously you track um, impressions and reach, mm -hmm. um, sometimes clicks, and if it's uh, like to increase the number of visitors to your website, you uh, track clicks. Um, and if it's about um, sales increase and revenue, then you track conversions of different events. So which metric to track, which data to follow, it really depends on the goal. And I 
often been very frustrated because a lot of brands, a lot of marketers, they mix up this uh, you know, dynamic. And at the beginning, they say, OK, we, let's create this content for uh, brand awareness. And at the end, they look only at conversions and sales. Yeah, and you right. know, that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and yeah, it's, uh, so it's, it's very, very important for you to um, clearly define the goal first. And we often encourage people to even you know, clearly state that in the contract. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's, it's very important. Write it down. Yeah, write it and down. And make so sure many. you all agree on it. Yeah. Exactly. So you, know, you talked about trust. Mm -hmm. How do you measure trust? Well, so how, how do we measure trust? I'm not sure you can, by the way. But, like, you know, but from your perspective, how so, do you measure trust? Of course. So if you work with just one um, established media um, company, you know, trust can be created over a dinner table, you know, over uh, multiple projects. But now we're talking about um, hundreds or thousands, even thousands of creators, individual creators, who create the brand themselves for the brands. And it's, it's again, it's data, you know. Yeah. Uh, the trust is created when you communicate very clearly and transparently, honestly, about um, what are the results from your content. Uh, whether the metrics are well created from you know each uh, and every different you know campaign objective, so you need to talk about the data, and that's why you know we we have this vision. Um, we centralize the data, and we invite many many different stakeholders so that they are on the same page talking about the the same data and eventually build a trust. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Stefan Jan from Tubular is still here, but they have interesting data. Be interesting to see how he thinks you measure trust too. But anyway, something for a different conversation. Uh, at that point as well. But, you know, you think about these, these metrics that you talked about, but talk about how these platforms are changing in general. I know we see a lot of stuff going on on social video platforms. They're changing. I mean, Lazada could be the next big video platform, right? Yeah. And so how are we supporting that? How are, them, how are they changing, and how are you thinking about that from a data and a tracking mechanism? Well, certainly. Um you know, our platform was connected mainly to uh, Facebook and Google, you know, duopoly. Yep. And it was simple for us, for our developers. Now, when we present our platform, it's already connected to 30 plus different platforms because more and more uh, brands and agencies, they, they're using programmatics, different uh, ways to track their, uh, track their performance, so different ways, different like, analytics tools. So each time we present our product to any brand or any agency, they always ask one or two missing <laughs> sources. Yep. So yeah, that's why uh, we have a dedicated team that's just doing research on like, what kind of data sources we need to uh, add uh, in the future. So uh, there is a consensus that I, I, I saw this statistic somewhere, more than 95% of marketers in the global, global world um, believe in multi-channel strategy. So um, just you know, running ads on Facebook, um, delivering ROAS um, above like two thousand percent, you know that that's no longer uh, valid. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. multi-channel strategy is important. Important, totally, absolutely. Well, you know, brands think a lot about you know return on ad spend. Like, what's my ROAS, right? <laughs> well, is there a statistic or, should, or data point, or should there be a data point, or how should people think about? Return on creator spend, or return on influencer spend. Again, back to a campaign objective. Right. You need to define very well the objective. Uh, if it's about engagement, then you should, of course, track the engagement and the return, you know, as uh, engagement as return and on, on ad spend. So yeah, it's, it's about the well defining the goal. Yeah, um, I want that metric though. What's my return on my creator spend? What does it look like? Okay, I know what my goal is, but yeah, it's not just, you know, what, what does that return equal? Right? Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, that's, that's also why it's really important to have sort of like centralized view of everything because um, yes. often, creator, often creators and you know, brands, they don't just try one thing. They want to do A-B tests, they want to create multiple campaigns with different objectives and then see which content works the best for this specific objective. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to have like multiple strategies on multiple channels and then have a one single source of truth. Bring all that data together, yeah, absolutely. And then allow people to make intelligent decisions based on getting that, which is... Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about Web3. We've been talking about Web3 all day. Mm -hmm. That sort of change from consumption to participation to ownership. Creators are starting to own their communities. But if you think about creator-owned communities, you know, how does that change advertising? Because if I'm really going direct to my community, do I need advertising? 
Of course. So it's it's again, uh, as I said, um, advertising power structure is shifting from brand and some traditional media agency big. Big brands and big agencies towards individual creators. Um, you know, there's this democratization of content. People, what people talk about becomes brand. So advertising will go on. Um, you know, it, it's not the end of the advertising. Right. Um, so it, it, advertising will go on because um, you know people are more like more active in communities, and advertising happens when. Where, where people talk and gather. So uh, naturally, uh, as the power is shifting towards um, creator, creator economy, creator communities, advertising is also shifting towards uh, those communities. And you know, it, will, it, will, it will eventually nurture the economy and you know, it, will, it will go on. But in that context, what's important again is transparency, mm -hmm. trust, transparency and verification. And trust. There will be more verification of uh, performance and activities. So, and you probably answered this question with transparency, trust, and verification, but talk about the relationship between brands, agencies, and creators, and how that's changing. So brands, uh, um, they're, they used to just give orders. Yeah, you know, right. They have this idea, uh, so answer is already there, so you just create what we tell you to create. Now, it's the opposite. Creators, they create multiple stories, and now people vote. You know, people vote. They subscribe. They 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 like the contents that they, they they like, and that becomes a brand. So brands are getting information, and and they're they're identifying their value from uh, what's going on in those communities. So that's that that's what I mean by the power shift. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's totally shifting. Um, think about creators. So you've got creators in the audience. Yeah. Um, who aren't marketers, right? Maybe didn't grow up with that marketing background. What are the couple of data points that they should keep in mind when they work with brands, when they're selling their own things? What are those two or three things? I mean, yes, it's about your objectives and all that, but what are a couple of data points that you can help them understand or know or zero in on that they can start with, you know, kind of getting this world? Uh, yeah, reach, clicks, um, conversions, yep. and also engagements. Um, viewership, um, all these metrics that are provided by different channels. Um, yeah, those are some representative What's metrics. What's the most important, though, if you were to pick one or two of those? If you're a macro influencer, then reach, I would say reach uh, is more important in general. Uh, if you're more like a micro influencer, then it's always conversion. Conversion, yeah. yeah. And you can talk about different conversions because there can be many different conversion events. Uh, can be um, how many items are added to cart, how many purchases, uh, how many signups and subscribe subscriptions, and yeah. So conversions are mostly important. How are people measuring engagement these days? How do you measure engagement? So uh, yes, yeah, subscriptions, viewership, um, yeah, number of signups, um, yeah, that I mean, likes. Um, those are traditionally yep. yeah. Yeah, or, or I mean, a comments tie into that, like comments, yeah, comments per viewer, yeah, comments per subscriber, comments, likes yeah. per viewer. Uh, and also, what's important is not just the quantity. That's also one big trend that I see. So people used to um, like it. Brands used to like it when there are many, 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 um, like high number, like big number for each metric. But I've seen some brands, I, I, I started to see some brands who say, who, who specifically say, OK, it's OK to reduce the reach if we can get quality leads. So sometimes quantity, instead of quantity, quality is more important. So right. uh, okay, don't, don't care about the reach, don't care about the clicks, but I'll, and even don't care about the conversion. But per conversion, I want to get a quality lead. So that's also like one metric that brands are putting importance on. Yeah, it's interesting. We've seen, at least recently, and I won't mention the company name, but you know, a couple of uh, media companies like have incredible views, but very little engagement, very little comments, very little likes, and it's like, it's a real red flag, but I don't think there's enough understanding that, like on YouTube, for example, if you see somebody who's got a million views but only 100,000 subscribers and only yeah. 23 likes, that's a red flag, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why you need um, to look at not just the data from one single source. You need to look at data from multiple sources because um, different from the influencer I mentioned yeah. earlier, but we. 
worked another with a, another influencer, and uh, that influencer posted a YouTube video about our brand. We had a lot of uh, views, and we were happy. But then we got like two or three quality leads, so we <laughs> thought there was a problem. Okay, there's a problem, and we analyzed uh, data from uh, Google Analytics. We also analyzed data from our own CRM system, and then we cross-checked everything on our own dashboard, and we concluded that it was it was fraud. Yeah, interesting. And then uh, I'm not even going to ask you who it was, but were, was there resolution there, or was it just like we're just moving on and we're not even going to get into just it? Just moving on was yeah. not. It was not. It's not really big, worth yeah. getting into it. Yeah, totally. Right, well, let's talk a little bit about platforms in general. We've had Meta on stage, we've had Google on stage, we've had TikTok, we've had um, we've had Twitter. How do you see? I mean, like. Facebook slash Meta and Google really have owned advertising over the past few years. Is that changing? It is changing. As I said, more and more brands and agencies, uh, they, they say, okay, having like data from programmatics um, is a must because they spend more on programmatics than just you know, a couple of uh, platforms. Uh, Multi-channel strategy is important, so it is shifting. I, yeah. I, yeah. Are there new platforms emerging that you're seeing that you're like, oh yeah, there's some really interesting TikTok, stuff going on here. Snap, and TikTok, you know, Snap. If you, if you ask a 16-year-old and uh, a girl in Silicon Valley, you know, she will say, okay, um, Instagram, no, like TikTok, you know, yeah. she, she, she only looks at uh, like vertical uh, short forms than like uh, horizontal videos, long videos. Yeah, so, I mean, there's even... A even shorts, as we were talking about before, is interesting. I mean, I know that's still part of the Google area as well. But um, so, how do you build? Like, what are the things that help you build that multi-channel strategy across all these platforms? To build a multi-channel strategy across all these different platforms. So it's not just Google and Facebook. I want to do TikTok. I want to do Snap. I want to do all those things. Well, Some tips about making that happen. Again, without data. Without data, that, right? Yeah, without data. It all that's comes why down I to the do data. Understand your question. It comes so down. So without data, with, without data, I cannot really uh, say there's one single like solution, like golden answer. Um, yeah, then try try Atrial. <laughs> Go to Atrial.com and try many different strategies. And then see which content uh, works for you know uh, which brand, and then you 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 conclude okay this is the the right multi-channel strategy. So you sat there and listened to James from Lazada talk about that. And we're seeing Amazon and Walmart leaning into ads as well. They're building something really interesting. How do you see those platforms emerging as a place for marketers to work on and spend their dollars through, whether it's direct or through um, advertising and other things? So yeah, this like. It, it's it's amazing that they're all building APIs. Right. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And that explains how it, important it is to get data in real time, uh, as transparently as possible. So yeah, like Walmart, Walmart advertising is uh, yeah providing now APIs, and we saw many brands who wanted that data on the dashboards. So we were building that, so we see a very you know fast move of. From many different platforms towards, uh, you know, providing more real-time and transparent data, and I think it's natural that yeah. that's happening. That's what the market wants. Yep. So we have a couple minutes left. Um, let's talk about the future, what it looks like. And so for Adriel, how are you guys thinking about the creator economy and supporting the creator economy two or three years from now? As Adriel. Yeah, as Adriel. Uh, like, so what are you guys gonna do? So we, we, do pro, we do provide a solution for, for individual creators. Uh, so Adriel scales um, as the ad spend goes up, so it's affordable uh, for small businesses and individual creators. Um, it's very, it's, it's we, we, uh, very easy to integrate, uh, very friend, user friendly, so um, it's, it's, it's best for uh, non, yeah, yeah, not professional marketers, let's say. Um, so yeah, we do have like Adriel Light for individual creators. Adriel Light, yeah, is we, that it? Yeah. Adriel Light, yeah, <laughs> Adriel Light, let's say. Yeah. I love it. Um, all right, so let's just talk a little bit about, I've been asking this, uh, so are there tech trends over the next year or two that you're leaning into, something really interesting happening in the overall market that you're like, yeah, that's a trend next year that you need to keep your eye on? I'm not sure if it's a tech trend, but there is a trend that I w I'd like to talk about, uh, is that, as I said, like, there's a lot of power shift. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, like clearly, what I see is a shift from agencies to brands. Yep. So brands uh, for them, digital ad spend was more like a support. Like di digital digital marketing was more like a supportive uh, ways um, uh, against uh, traditional TV commercials and outdoor um, advertising. But now they're spending more on digital spaces, so it becomes really important for them to. Uh, take the control. Uh, take take control over uh, ad spend on digital spaces. Yeah. So they want to get rid of dependency on uh, agencies, and that's why they want to have like real real time data. Because agencies they can just you know report once a day, so they don't really take care about like whether the data is coming in real time or not. But brands they want to look at how their marketing dollar is spent, just like they're looking at their stock chart. Right. Because they they want to take control over you know yeah, what happened uh, next hour what's happened exactly, last hour yeah. yeah exactly so I think real time will be very important uh, brands will take uh, will want to take control uh, and eventually yeah there there will be a lot of techs and uh, solutions uh, attached to that trend all right well last thing real quick is there a big surprise going to happen in 2022 we don't know about that you see happening so. Um, just talk about Israel. Uh, we're raising uh, about 15. Oh, you are? Yeah, cool. we're raising yeah 15 million dollar um, fund uh, very soon. It, it will be closed before the end of this year. After that, you know, in Singapore, uh, you'll see a lot of advertising advertising about Israel, and we'd love to work with some of the creators in this room. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll make something really great. Well, so good luck closing come, that yeah. round. I know how hard it is to close a round, and uh, good luck in making that happen. It's, it's promising. What's, what's more important is to, to make a great brand in this yep. market. Right, and get yeah. the right the Yeah, right I love Singapore. <laughs> cool, I love Singapore too. Sophie, thank you so much. Sophie Ohm so from much. Adriel, CEO. Great background, great history, building a great company. Thank you very much. <laughs>